it's so upsetting. The timing of everything is very DC. It's exactly <laughs> on par with what I've come to expect. Welcome to Backseat Directing. Where we talk about movies, TV shows, comics, and more. We're your hosts, Andrew and Aaron. And we post new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Today we're talking about the DCEU and Henry Cavill. <laughs> now do the dance. Three, two, <laughs> one. Action. Andrew, it's a sad day. Uh, Henry Cavill is no longer Superman. Wait, what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's tragic. And at this point, I'm not even as upset for myself as I am for Henry Cavill. Because, mm -hmm. like, and by upset for myself, I mean upset that I don't get to watch any more movies with Henry Cavill, which would normally be my focus because I'm me and I don't know Henry Cavill. But... <laughs> I, I think that Henry Cavill seems fantastic. I'm a big fan of his, and now I'm angry for him. Like, how many times are they going to just spit on him? Yeah. Like, they're, they, he found out online that he was dropped from his role on his birthday, originally. Then he gets called back. I know there's other things going on with The Witcher, but regardless, he leaves The Witcher. His, his primary focus now, I'm sure, and his excitement of, for his career is to be Superman again, which it seems like the promise that is being dangled in front of him with having him come and do a cutscene in Black Adam, only to have that ripped out from underneath him. Again, it's, it's so upsetting. Like, I'm upset with the studio. I, don't, I'm, I mean, I, I'm happy potentially with the direction they're going. I wanted them to do a reboot. But I didn't want them to dangle a carrot in front of Henry Cavill and then do the reboot. Right. Yeah. The, the timing of everything is very DC. You know, like, it's just, it's exactly on par with what I've come to expect. You know, like. It's a disaster. Oh, the camera is... just stopped recording. Why? It just says it's weird. Have you seen it? I don't know. Maybe it ran out of space. All right. My camera is back on. We were talking about this is the most DC thing to happen uh, with all the bad timing of everything. Yeah, it does kind of seem like uh, it's come to be like their, their like hallmark, their, uh, their calling card. That's what I'm yes. looking for. Like, and it's why so many people like Marvel more. It's not because DC isn't as good. It's just they can't seem to get the production side of things together, you know? But I think that... This is also, oh my gosh, I get tired of sounding like a broken record because it always is wrong. <laughs> but I think this could be finally the one true signal that they're back on track. Because while it is frustrating, it's... I'll believe it when I say it. <laughs> James Gunn and Peter Safran, the new creative and business heads of DC Studios, uh, are cleaning house. They are doing what I've thought they should do for a long time, which is scrap. If, if something's a mess scrap it if you have a piece of art and you're using paint they're not using pencil these movies are out there they're painting and it looks like a mess at a certain point i think that they can't save all the mistakes that have been made by so many other people they need to go back to the drawing board and they can do something that has the that, that is a clear vision throughout so the most frustrating thing about this news is that we did a podcast with Zach <laughs> about this topic, about DC and everything, and we posted it, and literally the next day, they announced that they're cleaning shop, canceling Wonder Woman 3, they're not doing the Man of Steel sequel, uh, Black Adam is most likely gone, and we like just put a po podcast out about talking about DC, and in that podcast, Zach is like, but things are looking up because we have Henry Cavill back. <laughs> but we're excited to see Man of Steel 2. <laughs> On the bright side, DC Studios put out their official logo and it looks pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so despite the fact that this happened to Henry Cavill, I think this is the best thing that could happen. Because I was even saying that in the episode that we did release before this came out, I even said like, 
they should just start over. Like, yeah. I was telling Zach, and he was really against that because he really wanted Henry Cavill, and he wanted uh, Momoa, Aquaman to be... Ben Affleck. He, He's a big Ben Affleck yeah, guy. Yeah, he wanted, like, all the same characters, maybe change one or two, and I was just saying the whole time, I'm like, that's messy. You have it's to messy. Ch- you it's, have to change Ezra Miller. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, it's, it's just... It's messy. You know, like, they had to change all of Aquaman, too, because of Amber Heard. Like, yeah. Just start I, fresh. I think they could have had their cake and eaten it too. And they could have gone with Flashpoint and just pick and chose what they wanted to change and kept all of these people that we want to keep. But your way is cleaner. And I also think that James Gunn, I think, made a statement that he wants to do a younger Superman, um, which is kind of the way the new animated universe is starting with like a younger Superman just off the bench, like becoming from Clark Kent to Superman. And I think that that's a really good way to go when you're designing a universe to start with Superman, center it around Superman, and to start with a young actor and a young version of Superman so that we can get that journey from start to finish. Right. I think that's ultimately going to be the best way to go and the best storytelling like uh, lane for them to fall into. Plus, it's it's fresh. Like every, All the characters are young. All of our current Snyderverse DC characters are older. Yeah, and I don't think these... I'm all about, like, we just did an episode in Avatar The Way of Water, too, you know, and, like, how James Cameron seems to be have full control, and it's, like, his story. Uh, I feel like it wouldn't be as good if James Gunn just came in and, like, tried to save the story, you know? Like, I think a original James Gunn idea, movies, scripts, starting over from scratch would be way better than him trying to somehow incorporate all of the past Snyderverse and make things connect and all that stuff and try to fix all the bad things that have happened. I feel like that would just be a mess. I know I'm using a lot of metaphors here, but sometimes it's easier to just buy a new car. Yeah. That, you know, like <laughs> you're, you're got a, a, a tried and true car that you might love and is nostalgic, but you know, it keeps breaking down, keeps breaking down. Just buy a new car. I and, agree. and they're starting over again. I think shows, I think this, if anything shows James Gunn and Peter Safran are like committed. Yes. Because they, they went all in. They said They're doing the hard things. Yeah. That weren't getting done before. And the, and it's it's hard to tell these people and f- to tell fans and to tell your your cast and crew, like, not gonna happen. But yeah. they're they're cutting they're cutting cords and we know that James Gunn likes to do things his way. So and he likes to work with his characters. From my understanding, Henry Cavill got back into Black Adam, but that was still under the old regime, right? So, like, James Gunn wasn't like, hey, go play Superman for this little small role and then you'll be back, you know? So, like, it's not maybe as bad as it looks. Like, it's not the current people's fault, you know? Like, it's... It's, it's things that they put the in... old the regime yeah. having, like, going out there and being like, yeah, come have this part. You're promised another movie. It's super unfortunate that they did that, what you just said and put the new leadership in the position yeah. that they did because then they with that if that not is not part of their plan they now have to really like kind of screw over people that they is not their fault so i have two other things that i want to talk about yeah. and we're keeping this episode short and whenever we say that it goes for an hour so <laughs> let's kind of dive one, right into one more it. take i want to yeah right i want to say both of them so first the hierarchy didn't change the is the rock dead like like That movie was basically now pointless. He, I guess, got asked to be in a cameo for Shazam 2 and declined. Did he actually say, I only play with the big boys or something like that? I've seen that line floating around a lot, but I don't know. I don't know if he actually said that, but if he did, like, dang. I mean, even if he did, it was probably kind of a jovial sense. I don't think he seems like a genuine jerk, but... yeah. But, and then the second thing I want to talk about is, like, that rumor of, like, oh, they're going to make uh, the Batman be the first movie in the universe. And then that came out to be false. Um, but I want to talk about, like, what you would think if that was the case. I, I don't want it to be the case. I think that the best Batman movies that we've ever had are in their standalone universe. And I think that is going to be the case for Matt Reeves' Batman. And I, I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't want all that studio attention and all those those rules and guidelines on Matt Reeves. I want Matt Reeves to do it his way, and I think that's what he wants to. So I, I say leave it. Yeah, that's kind of the theme of uh, things lately is like 
when someone has an idea, like let him, let him take it, you know, like let him explore that idea. He doesn't want, I don't want him to be beholden to, oh, well, Batman can't do that because Superman just fought that guy. He's in jail. Right. It's like, well, just keep them in their own universe and Batman can do whatever he wants. It doesn't feel like a Superman could fit into the Batman universe, you know? Like not that yeah, it would it would completely change the world. Yeah, for sure. And I'm I'm glad that that was false and I'm glad James Gunn came out and was like that's not true. Like yeah. you need to check your facts, you know? Like <laughs> it's good that he's respecting like the things that were good, you know, and then trying to fix the things that were yeah. bad. You know, but like what's going to happen with the rock, you know? Like is is he going to come back as Black Adam, you think? Or do you think Black Adam's just scrapped for a long time, you know? Like that was obviously a big passion project for the rock and now it's like it's gone. Like I, it, I don't see things working out between James Gunn and Dwayne Johnson because of the the route they're taking right now is a hard pivot and I don't think the rock likes decisions he's not involved in. Yeah. I think and I he, feel like the cast of Shazam probably feels a little like salty toward towards him like i saw an inter- a small interview with zachary levi uh kind of responding to like one of the rock's comments or whatever and he's just like whatever man you know, like, <laughs> yeah i don't know if i was taking out of context or what it's so hard to judge things nowadays yeah, you know, right. like snippets and headlines um, but let's let's maybe rephrase it like if i was on the the set of shazam i'd be like this guy like well, <laughs> you're a Shazam villain like why are you so upset Shazam is like the heavy hitter right. of DC I feel like is one yeah. of the like most successful I don't know about one of the most successful but like he's one of their movies I think that has worked out the best yeah. like they really under- seem to understand their own tone and their own lane and right. I, I don't consider like Small Fry not as much of a household name sure but neither is Black Adam yeah and then he could if he went into the Shazam, you'd be like, yeah, Shazam was great because of me. <laughs> you know, like he had that opportunity just like all the other franchises that he jumps in on. What do you want to see in terms of a new tone in the new world that is going to belong to James Gunn's creative vision? So I still want to see it kind of dark. Uh, me too. I like that aspect of it. I think that's a good contrast to Marvel. Otherwise, they might as well just merge. Right. If they're going to be the same tone. Yeah. Um, so it, I guess kind of keeping that tone from the Snyderverse, you know, the dark aspect of it. Um, and I would like to see maybe some like character arcs that we haven't seen, you know, like maybe Batman does start off with this like nobility of like, I'm not going to kill blah, blah, blah. And then maybe three movies in that is tested and changes, you know, and then maybe we get to see him kind of come full circle. Like we kind of saw with, um, the Snyder cut, but it was just the end of it you know mm-hmm. like we didn't get all the context building up um i don't know i i, I don't know but i i do know i want to see the actor of superman be just as fit as henry cavill it's <laughs> tough I, I i don't know who i want to see be superman i think henry cavill is probably going to continue to be my superman like in my heart of hearts and we're going to get yet another batman yeah like Batman is just like can be played by anyone it seems like Here, here's my my other question for you though with Henry Cavill starting you know leaving this journey of being Superman what role do you want to see him film next do you have anything in mind mm. I, while you think I have an option in mind okay let's hear it there have been some talk fan casting of him potentially being the next James Bond and I would love to see a turn on Henry Cavill and James Bond and maybe even like a complete tonal shift from what we've seen so far from like Sam Mendes, James Bond, and Daniel Craig, James Bond. I, I think that it could do things a little bit differently because um, there's been different kinds of Bonds, different levels of seriousness the franchise has taken itself. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see them go that route as like his next big character. I think <laughs> he's kind of out of the running for that though, isn't he? I feel like it's between uh, a few other people. I don't remember their names. But I thought he was, like, kind of out of that. Maybe he's back in it now that he's not Superman. I don't know. But who's, I also I, think I he's maybe a little old. I don't know, you know? Who's, who's in studio talks, but yeah. that's who, who I would want. Yeah. I think he'd be good, but I think in terms of the studio wanting him, I think he's too old. Because whoever's going to be James Bond is probably going to be James Bond for the next decade, right? Like, uh, like Daniel Craig was and the ones before him. I don't think that needs to be the case. I I don't know. I 
I, I feel like I would rather have Henry Cavill for less time than a different actor for a decade. Yeah. But it's all about profitability, which kind of changes things. Um, going back to the thing that you, or the question you asked. Of, what role would you like to see Henry Cavill join in now that he's no longer Superman? Going back further than that, <laughs> where you asked, what do I want to see from the new movies? I want to see them take a, not a full realistic approach, but like more so in terms of like the, the fights and the choreography and like how the movement and stuff is. Like, like Wonder Woman 2 is a good example of this bad representation of movement in my eyes you know where she's like jumping and she holds this like stance and travels up and down in that stance like there's no like dynamic in her movement like a like spider-man like swinging you know how he's using his hips to like launch himself into the next movement you know like i want to see more of the the thought go into the animation of the fight scenes or like how she's like super fast and is like blocking bullets like this you know like i don't know she has a shield can't she just use her shield like it would look just a lot cleaner and, and more believable and realistic. And I get that they can do things that aren't real, but there's a way to do that and to making it feel real. You know, like we just watched Avatar. That all felt really real, but they're doing things that I cannot do. <laughs> you know, like a lot of things that we saw in that movie weren't real, like, but it all felt real. Like, that's what I want to feel. I want to feel like the world is real, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that the the world build, building has a lot of chance for growth now that they're starting from ground zero. If Superman crashes on Earth, what happens from there? Only time will tell. So I hope that they create a world with a vast expanse of characters. And if there's one thing we know about James Gunn, he can work with characters. He's he got, can work with unknown characters, yeah. too. So I think that will give him the opportunity to have a huge wealth of new experiences, new relationships, if we touch on these different characters. I think they got to get Green Lanterns in there, open up mm -hmm. the DC universe to the greater universe of like the space, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that we'll, we'll see a lot of new exciting character relationships. And maybe we'll see a multiverse and Henry Cavill can come back. Yeah. Maybe. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you have to bring a tear to my eye. I love, I really do love Henry Cavill and I think he handles the situation with a lot of grace. I think that there's few in his shoes that would handle it as well as he does. The statements that he puts out, he's clearly just excited to... He loves the character, genuinely loves Superman, loves Kal-El, and he wants to bring his love for it to the screen, and he wants to share the experience of, like, of hope and belief and everything that Superman represents with the fans and people who love him too. And he, he's grateful for what he's had, and like to, to read his like posts online is just like... It's very humble, and it's honestly, he's too understanding. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's too calm, and he's too kind. But, uh, yeah, I think that he's, he's handled it with a lot of grace. Yeah, uh, I Professionalism. Agree. I agree. I'm excited to see where things go, but it seems like it's going to be a while until we actually do, because they still have two movies that are going to come out yeah, they under roll, the old yeah, regime. They so. want to roll all this stuff out and try to recoup as much of the money that they spend as possible. <laughs> right. Which is only good business sense. And it's also, like... A lot of these people worked really hard on these movies, too. So it's like paying respect to them as well. You know, like just canceling the Batgirl movie or Batwoman, Batgirl. 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 Canceling that movie after all those people, like it's done, it's finished. You know, and like all those people don't get to see the final product. Like that's got to be really hard. So it's like good that they're rolling out these last few movies, even though they are just trying to make money off of them to kind of recuperate what they've lost, you know, and <laughs> yeah. spent on the movie. But... I feel like it pays respect in a way too of like and they've done a lot of reshoots and stuff and um whatnot so pays respect to the fans too who yeah. have they've been telling us this movie's gonna come out this movie's gonna come out <laughs> oh we pushed it back right is okay let us watch it <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly i don't know how big their box office will be though like i don't know if people want to go see those movies anymore you yeah, know? I think there's. So I think the fans like us. Yeah, we'd want to go. Like the diehard fans, they all want to go. But I don't think the mass public would really care now that everything's just kind of even more in shambles. You know. Yeah, I think there's so much confidence still in the idea of the superhero film that no matter what, you know, 
rain, or, rain, or, rain or shine. It'll bring in a good amount of money, and we're definitely going to get those James Gunn movies. I, th- I think it's going to happen. Yeah. All right. Anything else to add? Um, just a uh, final pronouncement of my love for Henry Cavill. Yeah. Should we take a moment of silence? Okay, that was long enough. <laughs> Nobody wants to listen to our silence. Yeah, but that would have been funny because we held it for a long time. People would be like, did it pause? <laughs> They're checking the phone. <laughs> They're checking it. And then while you're checking your phone, you should give us a five-star rating. That helps the podcast out so we can keep making these. And more people can listen in. And then more people can comment. And we can have more conversations with everyone, which we love doing. Yeah. So. And for now, thanks to our listener for watching the show. Yes. Appreciate you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, that's a wrap. wrap.